Right, we're just coming up to seven o'clock. So um, what I thought I'd do tonight, sometimes I think I miss some of the simpler things, which are things that people need more often. So what we're going to look at is matching stripes, because somebody said to me the other day, they never use stripes because they frighten them. And I thought, gee, we've got to get that sorted. So I have some stripes here. And um, the reason it came to mind was I made some stripes to go with that little top that I made for Everly. And this has side seams. So I had to match them down the side seams, front and back. And it was a piece of cake. So I'm going to show you how I did it, OK? So you know, I think one of the problems with the serger is you have all those feed dogs, all that distance, and I think sometimes the fabric moves if you feed it in at the front of the foot. You know, I'm always saying to you that the best feed is when you get it right up to the needles. So I'm going to show you how I prepare the fabric and then how I sew it. And I'm going to show you for a quarter of an inch seam, which is fairly easy, and for a five eighths of an inch seam. Okay. Right. So I'm going to bring the other camera in, and I have the stuff here. So this is this is steamer seam, and it's quarter of an inch, and it is a sort of sticky tape. And basically, it's got glue this side and paper on that side. And when it's fairly new, it works fairly well. If it's old or you haven't kept it in a plastic bag, it can be less effective. So that's always worth remembering. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two striped pieces and match them up. And what I do, this is a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm going to put the tape right on the very edge, it's a quarter of an inch tape. So if I use my four thread overlock, my um, a wide setting, it should cover the tape. And I'm just going to tear it off because it's easier that way. And I'm just going to put it right up to the edge. And it, if I push it down, it should, I don't want to stretch the fabric though, that's the one thing I don't want to do. So I'm just wiping it down the fabric sliding my nail down it and what this is doing is it's obviously adding a bit of sticky tape but it's also going to stabilize the fabric to a certain extent just sometimes you have trouble you, you can lift up one end and the whole thing comes up so i'm going to make sure it's well secured on this end and if I'm lucky, it's going to come off and leave the sticky tape on the fabric. Can you see that? It's probably not easy to see, but the sticky tape is on the fabric. So this is the point where I'm going to match up my seams. So here's the piece I'm sewing it to. And I'm going to place my black. I've got right sides together. I put that tape on the right side of the fabric. And I'm going to match up my seams as best I'm able. So I'm just making sure the black stripe meets up with the black stripe, pushing it down. And that's how I did those leggings. I just put this tape on all the seams. It took but a minute and it just made the whole thing a lot easier. So I have attached it. And then I'm going to make sure it's well secured. You actually press it will really secure it. But I don't know if I'm, I've got it quite right. So I'm going to open it up and check it. And I think you'll agree that's pretty perfect. So I'm quite happy with that. So what I would do now is go to my iron and press it because that will really fuse it so it can't move at all. So I have already done that with a piece over here. And here it is. And again, Let's check it on this side and you can see they're pretty well matched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the serger now. And I am going to sew it, but I could mess it up if I didn't do it the right way. So that's why I wanted to show you me sewing it as well as preparing it. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my needle, lift my foot, pull on my, to get my threads off the um, back of the, I can't think of the word, stitch finger. And first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my first needles, first thing that's going to happen is the needles are going to nail the fabric. So I'm going to hand turn them into the fabric and then I'm just going to stitch. Now, I need to also consider, do I need differential feed? Because this is a knit. And the answer to that is I probably stabilized it by gluing it, by fusing it. So I probably do not need the differential feed for this seam. And I'm going to, because this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to make sure I have it on 7.5. And I'm going to make sure that I keep my fabric right up kissing the knife, okay? So I'm actually not cutting anything off. And the advantage of, of having that quarter of an inch seam allowance is I've been able to get that fabric right back to the needles. So all those feed dogs are working for me. That big long foot has it nice and firmly between the two and my needles have nailed the start. So I'm just going to sew it and we'll see what happens. And the end I've actually matched up perfectly too. So it should, I won't get that extra. You know, some people say to me, well, my ends don't match. Well, your ends don't match unless you make your ends match. And actually using this tape is going to help that. So here I have it. There you go. And so there are my matched stripes. And I think they're pretty perfect. I might have missed slightly down here, but only fractionally, not enough to worry about. So do I have any questions on that? Because I'm going to show you how to do it on a 5-8 seam allowance. But I just wanted to come back and check if I had any questions. The name of the tape is steamer seam quarter of an inch tape. Somebody says they use it all the time for zippers. Yes, ideal. And you know, let's not forget that we have this thing, it's called glue, washable glue, Elmer's glue. If you're gonna use Elmer's glue, then you probably want to wait for it to dry before you actually um, stitch it. But um, I'm sure all of you have Elmer's glue. Can you use the tape on a curved seam? Um, it's not so easy to always match on a curved seam because of the curve. Um, but yes, you can absolutely use it on a curved seam. Um, even if you have to cut into it fractionally to open it up to go around the curve, does the tape wash out? I, I, you know, I'm sure the tape does wash out. It wears out if it doesn't wash out. Um, but uh, where have I just sewn it? You don't really know that it's there. It's still stretchy if it needs to be. Um, I'm sure it will wash out in time, but it's it's no longer visible. It's such a fine web. Linda says she couldn't find me. She'll have to watch from the beginning. That's fine. I'm going to repeat the process again anyway for this. So what if I'm doing a five eighths of an inch seam allowance because that's a different kettle of fish. So what I want to say on that is I've already fused this one. Um, let me put it up here. I've already fused this one, but you can see that I put the steamer seam right next to the stitching line, okay? I didn't put it on the edge because there'd be all that half inch of room for it to get messed up again, okay? So this time round, I put the steamer seam in from the edge and up to the stitch line, which is actually what I did with quarter inch. I put it up to the stitch line, but it looks like I've gone from the edge, which I did. But what I'm saying is if it's five eighths and you're cutting off three eighths, then you need to move your steamer seam or glue into the seam line. So there's no chance for it to move. So I have that 
right next to the seam line and I can check here whether it matches before I stitch it. So let me show you. See, it's not secured at the very edge here. It's only secured along the seam line. So the problem with using this method, and I, th these, these are different lengths, okay? So they won't match at the end. But the problem with using this method is if I put this into the machine and I'm cutting off three eighths, I'm going to have to feed it in and I can only get as far as the knife. And the problem with that is that not all the feed dogs are engaged with the fabric. I've still got some room to, to go before I get to the needles. So there's an opportunity for it to mess up. OK, so how am I going to resolve that? Well, how I'm going to resolve that is I'm going to cut off the first two inches into a notch. OK, so let me do that here. Always worried I'm going to, it's difficult to work my scissors too far away. So I'm cutting off the seam allowance for about two inches. It needs to be at least the length of the foot. And I'm going to show you. So there you go. OK, just going to cut a little bit more off at this end. Right, so I've cut this notch, and what that allows me to do is to lift my foot, put it right up to the needles with the edge against the knife. And when it gets to here, it will start cutting, and that's fine. And again, I'm not using differential feed because I kind of stabilized the fabric because I fused it, or, or put that fusible tape in it, I should say. So it cut off my extra tape, and there it is, OK? But you have to, to, get, to be sure it's going to work, you have to cut that notch out at the beginning just so you can get it back to the needles, nail that fabric, and then stitch. But that's pretty cool, isn't it? And it's pretty easy. So nobody should be afraid of using stripes. Somebody said they thought they were watching me and now they've found me. I have a different blouse on. I have a knit top that I made some time ago. It has a nice cozy neckline. I like dramatic necklines and the bottom is kind of, I can't stand tall enough, but it's, it's um, asymmetric. Is this available for playback? Yes, it is. Um, if it, it's on my Facebook page under videos, and I probably put it on YouTube um, as well, just because it's easier to find. So, yes. So any questions on that? I think it's super cool. I think it's super easy. As I said, this tape, if you don't store it in a plastic bag or something, it dries out. And then it's really hard to um, to separate the glue and it's it just loses its stickiness. So if you buy steam seam quarter of an inch, keep it in a plastic bag to keep the moisture in. And be, I always tear off a bit and then start further around just so I don't get the very end. Um, but it works really well. And um, somebody said they use it for zippers. I think, you know, I've used it for zippers too. It's a great idea. Or just anything where you want to make sure that the end stays down. It's, And if that fails, then I have no problem using Elmer's glue. You know, I use Elmer's glue a lot on things taping down ribbon um you know it's just it's just super easy where did you get that tape um i got it actually from joanne's your your favorite dealer will have it i'm certain um it's readily available um and there's there's other makes this isn't the only one there's there is there are makes that have wash away and all sorts of things so just read the instructions but this isn't the only um type there are other type types as well i just happen to have this one yeah somebody said they have trouble separating the bits if i have that problem one i rub it down with my nail and two if you heat it slightly, I think that helps as well. Um, but, you know, I don't think you have to fuse it. You could just 
this one's held together fairly well, but I just feel if you fuse it, you've really secured it. Is the new table for the Triumph useful? It's essential if you want to have accurate seams because if you use the um, fabric guide with it, you can do that. It helps keep knit straight. Some just move no matter what. That's true, Eva. And, and you know, don't forget, once you've used a tape like that, to a certain extent, you have stabilized it. Now, that doesn't mean it won't stretch when you need it to, but you have fairly well stabilized it. I would always test it on your fabric first. If something's really stretchy, it may not have stabilized it as much. Um, but once you've pressed it, I think you've stabilized it a bit. So that kind of helps with knits and you will not necessarily use your differential feed on that seam. Okay. Okay, Eileen says she peels off the paper by folding an inch over on the tape and paper and the indent tears off easily. Good. So many, yeah, Elmer's glue to me is just perfect. My mother would never believe I use Elmer's glue in my garment and dressmaking and stuff now. She wouldn't leave it. <laughs> Think of all those times she made me baste. <laughs> so, Mum, I could just have used glue. <laughs> How long does each does tape stay sticky? I've had trouble even when I keep it stored in a plastic bag. Yeah, you know, I feel the same way too. You know, I get batches that are really good. I've actually had this one for ages and it's still quite sticky. So I just tear off a load of the outside if it isn't working. So, yes. So that is my story on using um, tape to match stripes i mean i think stripes are really stunning and um i think they make a great design element especially when they're in the diagonal on a v and things now would i want to sew it without tape no 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 i wouldn't you know if i'm going to go to the trouble of matching it like that i do want it to match perfectly and these certainly did but it was just so super easy and of course i didn't have to pin or anything because the glue helped them and as I said, this even has side seams. So sometimes with a, a stripe, I'll avoid doing a side seam just because I, then I don't have to match. But I'd forgotten how easy it was using that tape. I, I wouldn't do that again. Because the, the advantage of side seams in leggings is it gives a bit more shape to the leg. Otherwise, they can be a little bit baggy from the knee down, depending on your shape. Um, so, yeah. So don't forget stripes. They're a lot of fun. Um, let me show you the rest of the outfit because I've actually finished this one. I've got to. I haven't finished the other one. Now, this is the front. Evie likes pockets. So I added pockets to the front. But the prettiest is the back. Isn't that cute? Which is actually really good because Evie is always running away in the opposite direction. So that's mostly what you see of her. So, And then I made some leggings to match with the stripes and that's when I had to match the sides. So going on from that, this is actually going to be a class, a live class, a Facebook live class. You have to purchase it, it's $35 and it's going to run on the 2nd of December in a special group on Facebook. So basically what, what happens is you purchase the class off my website, which is debcallumstudio.com, and it's up there as child's top and leggings. And then you print off the download that comes with it, and it tells you which group to ask to join on Facebook. And I find people buy these things, and then they forget to join the group. Then they can't find the class because guess what? It's in that group. So um, if you do purchase it, make sure you do that. And as I say, it will run on the 2nd of December. I think it's 11 o'clock, but don't quote me on that because, you know, I get numbers wrong. Um, but it would be a fun so. And I think I don't really know how long it will take. This topic isn't hugely involved, um, but it may take a while, in which case I'll come back the next day and do the leggings. But um, it's it's super cute outfit and i know some of you like to sew for your grandchildren and i thought i'd do that a few of you asked 
So what else was I going to say on that? Let me just put the banner up with my website. So debcanamstudio.com and it's called the child's top and leggings. And if you can't make it on the day because you have something going on, then you can always watch the recording. And even if you do come in on the day and you watch it, you can come back and watch the recording at any time. Some people like to just watch the first time and then sew at their own pace. Others like to sew as I sew. So it's entirely up to you how you do it. So, Does the pattern separately? From, yes, I should add that too. The pattern is separate to my class. You have to purchase the pattern. It is, it is, yeah, I haven't got that written down. It is, it's written in the description for the class. It's CKC patterns and it's Asta's amazing layered top. I have got a brain. I have got a brain. I have got a memory. Asta's amazing layered top. And then um, the leggings I used, uh, they're the Sunshine Leggings by somebody and somebody that I use a lot. I can't think. It tells you in the description anyway. But yes, they're both downloadable um, patterns. And I will do a video on downloading the pattern and I will do a video on cutting out, especially if you decide to do stripes like I did. So that is all on that. So yes, you do. Oh, thank you very much, Tresha. Oh, awesome. And other things I'm doing this week, I, or you know what else I'm working on, which is super cute. I'm just going to grab it. You know, I have to say that this, the correct title of what I'm going to show you is Improvish, okay? It's not totally Improv, it's Improvish. So that is the same as the gold one idea, but I haven't put my circles on yet. And this is going to be a cushion, but I'm also going to do a table runner. And then I did it a little bit differently on this one. And this is probably... Uh, teach the class but this is the, probably the first one we'll do so that's the back and the front and they're slightly different one has serger decoration and one doesn't okay so i'm working on that for january right where else i am heading out to ohio this week i'm going to barn sewing in cuyahoga falls so looking forward to that um we've got three days there and i'm sure it'll be fun and I just want to give you the heads up on January. January, January the 12th and 13th, I'm at Flash Sewing Quilt in Sarasota, and we will be doing a robe class and the scrappy purse. That's my scrappy purse, but we're going to do a braided handle rather than that round one because it's hard work doing that round one, and I prefer the braids. And then January the 19th and 20th, I will be at the sewing studio, Orlando, and they haven't actually confirmed exactly what the subject's going to be. And January, January the 25th, 26th and 27th, I will be in Austin doing the class I missed the other week. So somebody says, have you done a class on the tunic top from the tunic Bible? No, but I absolutely plan to. I actually... And that's actually something you can help me with. I plan to do a lot more online. I'm not able to travel as much as I want to now. Um, so I plan to do a lot more online. And I generally do my online classes on Saturdays and Sundays. But would it be problematic to choose Tuesday and Wednesday or Thursday and Friday? Can you let me know your views on that? Because um, for the tunic class, I would really like to do three or four short classes over a week, not a full day. Um, but if if anybody could give me their feelings on that. I know some people work. I absolutely know that. But they're all recorded. And a lot of people that do my live classes, you know, maybe if I get 200 people, 100 of them won't actually come in on the day. They They watch the recording. I like weekdays better. 
that's great that's great it's just that richard's working now during the week so it, it makes the weekends more difficult to fit work into but I, I have no problem doing it during the week it fits in perfectly for me weekdays are better okay i love that i love that i i really do that's that's great for me too so i think that's any day is fine weekdays are great yeah i think weekdays are great you know um i think everybody's busy at weekends a lot of the time any day oh i'm so pleased to see all that that's great well then i I, I have loads of online stuff I want to do. One's the cushion class, two is the tunic class, and, and just a number of other things that I haven't done online, like bird bag, the little um, box bag I've recently done, and so on. So Linda's asked how Richard is. He's much better, thank you, much better. Any day is good. Awesome. That really solves a problem for me because um, I, it makes it easier for me to do online. So I think that's all I have this week. I will be away this week, but I'll be here next Monday. Any more table runners coming up? Yes, because this um, improvish thing I'm doing, which actually is a sewing machine class, although we will use our surges to do some of it. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm planning on doing that as a table runner too. Some people wanted cushions, some people wanted a table runner. But yes, no, I think weekdays is good. Can't wait to sign up for the jacket behind you. This one, this one is on Teachable, and um, you have to get the pattern, which is Vogue 9212. Yeah, I like table runners. I need a table runner. I need to work on that. So I think that is about it for this week. I will be back next week. And um, if there's anything you particularly want me to cover, especially things like stripes, I've never done that before in all my um, lives. And I think it was something I missed. So if there's anything like that you want help with or you've got suggestions for, that would be great. And um, I will see you next week. And I want to really thank you for coming in and watch me tonight, whether you watched it live or whether you're watching the recording, I just appreciate you spending time with me. Okay, speak to you soon. Have a great week.